Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5B. Today, we're gonna switch out our summer containers on our terrace to fall containers. And we're gonna do a little bit of cleanup in the raised bed. So right in front of you, you can see a trio of containers that are very tired this time of year. And so we're gonna take out these summer annuals and we're gonna replace them with some fresh fall goodies and uh, spruce up the terrace for the fall. What do you think, Christopher? I think that sounds like a great idea. Is it true we have some peaches? We do have some peaches. They're getting there. We thinned the peach tree out a little bit because the branches were starting to weigh down. It looks really cool. Yeah. Let's get uh, these annuals out of these containers and then we'll go through what we're going to replace them with. Cool. How about that? Sounds like a plan. All right, let me get the kangaroo. All right, so this is the aftermath of removing annuals. Whew. It's filthy, and there's some white flies happening down there. So we're gonna rake up the big chunks, blow off most of the dirt, and power wash some of this stuff off. And then, uh, yeah, this is the aftermath of removal. Beautiful. I know. I mean, that looks cute without anything around it. Yeah. And then this is the worst of all. Those surefire begonias are amazing, but boy, are they messy. Now we know if we plant them, we just got to keep up on it better. But yeah, we have some mess to clean up and then we're going to start planting some of these beauties right over here. So yeah, let's go through kind of what we have over here to work with. We have another purple fountain grass. Uh, we have some mums that we purchased the other day. You might have seen in the mum video. They're a little wilty. They need some water. Some more coral mums and pansies. Some red and purple mums. We're going to go a little crazy and try putting red and purple together back here. Some millet. Some ornamental peppers. Some bok choy. And some cabbage and or kale. So that's kind of what we're working with today. What do you think, Christopher? I think it's going to be a fun mix of colors. Oh, yeah. And we have this blonde ambition grass that we pulled from where the Tough Stuff Top Fun hedge is. And we didn't know where to put it. So we were like, oh, let's put it in a container and use it for fall decor. And it'll come back next year. Yeah. So Mass. this container here, um, I'm going to get some of this extra soil out and put it into this very empty container here. We left the power washer out because we fully intend to need to rewash after yeah. the planting. I mean, let's be real. This is, this is real life. We're not a fancy garden channel. We are not pretending. Okay. I think that's not enough. So what I'm going to put in here is this mum in here which i believe is a diva purple also i'm just so tempted to just leave it in the container like that do it <laughs> it's only going to be like, there a few weeks get a little more soil out of it and then just plop it right in do it i agree because like i can't even see it hopefully all of our garden friends will keep our secret and mums the word wow Oh, come on, laugh. That was a good one. <laughs> um, the guy who does Gardening Simplified with Stacey Arvella. What is his name? Oh, Rick Weiss. Yeah, he would love that. Gardening Simplified is a gardening podcast that we listen to. It's put out by Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs, and Stacey's an expert on all things shrubs so we reach out to her if we ever have problems and rick her co-host 
is the master of garden puns. Can you even tell that that's not planted in there? No, it looks perfect. Yeah, and it just needs some water and then it'll be fine. So. Beautiful. That's that. One down. <laughs> um, and then I was thinking of doing this grass that we'd saved. This is another purple fountain. And then doing three mums and a pansy. I say two mums and a pansy. No, I say. Three mums and a pansy. You'll see. You'll see once I get it in there. Also, the Asian council tree that's now cleaned out is going to be going to work with me to overwinter. It's not hardy here. So that will be leaving the terrace soon. Let's do this. It's so hard to try and look like somewhat nice in these videos while actually working. I don't know how people do it. You look fantastic. Thank you. But as Brene Brown says, comparison is the thief of joy. That was um, when we were in Michigan with Sky from Hamilton House Designs and Bethany from, this is Selena Red, so we're going to try a red and purple mix here, and Janie from Dig Plant Water Repeat, and Matthew from Southern Road Garden, and a bunch of other amazing content creators. Um, obviously, at some point, the topic turned to comparison with e each other or within the industry or whatever, and... Christopher and I are big Brene Brown fans, and Brene Brown said, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. And we shared that sentiment at dinner one night, and uh, it was very well received. So I'm happy about that. So I'm going to do the tilt out thing. Woo! Power washer just ag agreed with you on liking Brene Brown, I think. Right? So wait, if this one is. What did I say? That? That's red. And then this one is red. So the one that's going to be patty purple there. That'll be patty purple. Yeah. We're doing red. Isn't that crazy? It's fall. Yeah. And it's a purpley red. So, and then we'll do this pansy in here. What do you think of that? I like that. I love doing containers. I think Eric does so. the containers. Like I said, in a previous video, we have to balance the jobs between the two of us. And this just happens to be one of the jobs that he enjoys most. And they're fall containers, so we don't have to leave any room because we're probably we're going to have a harvest party in a couple of weeks. So we'll have people over to harvest hydrangeas and harvest any fall blooms that they want, because let's face it, it kind of makes our job a little easier because they're deadheading for us. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I want, even though these are going to be around tremendously long, I want it to look really nice. There's another red. See how it's going to work when I tilt. Right? Oh, yeah, I've got a good view here. Oh, there's my scooper. And then the other thing I like to do with bags is just roll them down as you use them. Christopher, what are some of your favorite um, fall traditions that we do up here in upstate New York? All right, so fall tradition number one would be apple picking. And then after you do your apple picking, you stop and get the warm apple cider donuts and any other apple related items, apple butter. My goodness, there's the list goes on. Um, pumpkin patches, haunted houses. 
It's a uh, it's haunted old... hay rides is a big thing here too. All right, that looks really good. Thanks. See everyone, you just have to trust the process sometimes. Sometimes, all the time. I'm using Coast of Maine potting soil, and the main reason we're using Coast of Maine potting soil, honestly, is it's pretty good quality. Um, but for two cubic feet, it's also really well priced. It's probably the best priced potting soil for two cubic feet. That it, that's organic. But we're exploring some options for next season. Since we do use so much of it. All right. So I made some mess, Christopher. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we're going to have to. Power washing is one of my chores. Yep. That's going to look really nice. Look, there it is. Ooh, again, with the power washer talking. So that's that. The lemon tree is starting to put on buds and we're not touching that. Yep. That's going to also come with me to work. I have really and big, then, beautiful picture Or me windows. to work. Could come with me. We're not underplanting the blue moffet, the moffet blue. But let's head over to by the peach tree and get that one going. I feel like that should just get topped up. Yeah, well, I should top it with compost, though. Oop, you're going oh. off the thing. That's OK. So we have this great idea of putting all of our planters on wheels, but because our patio is not smooth, it makes it really hard to move them anyway. <laughs> doesn't really help them. All right, so this one, I'm going to cheat and do the same thing I did in that one. And I'm just going to empty out the top couple of layers and then pop that mom on top. And it's a purple fountain mess, so. It is a purple fountain mess, as long as it, there you go. If you can keep it going back. Yeah. After the mums go in, you can let it free. Maybe. <laughs> We'll see how it does. All right, so this. This is. Red. Oops. I'm trying to move quickly, but also kind of just want to enjoy it. So. Take your time. That's red, and then I'll do a purple. Ooh, can you grab me one of those empty-ish containers so I can scoop some of this root out into it, please? Thank you. Do you remember what was in this container, Christopher? That had geraniums and salvia and yes. mini Vista indigo and heliotrope. It was a well used container. Oh, God, that's a humongous ant. But should we do? Pansies in here, or should I do some of those ornamental peppers? Do the pansies. So then you have two of the same containers identical. OK. Do you have any other fall traditions that you can think of? Well, I know a fall tradition that we're going to be starting because it's a, well, I haven't told you this, but I booked um, us to do a Sunday afternoon on the railroads through the Adirondacks where we ride the railroad bike. Oh, the rail trip. I would think I've heard of this. That sounds like a lot of fun. I figured you would either like be excited about it or you'd be like, oh, that sounds like work. Well, I think I'll just dress in layers because, you know, it could get real cold. When are we going? Uh, we're going on our anniversary weekend. All right, all right, all right. So that's there. I feel like we have more room in this one for some reason. Weird. Well, that's going to go there, but let me get the pansies in first. It's 
It's amazing how just one tiny container of pansies adds a little focal point. Just a little pansy magic. Okay. That there. How's that? Beautiful. Very festive. All right, Eric, tell us about this last set of containers. All right, so this last set of containers is mostly shade. Um, and I kind of went totally rogue on this one. I got some chartreuse millet. And then I got these coral colored mums, which I think are really pretty. Look at that color. Really cool. I'm gonna throw some ornamental peppers in there. So we're kind of gonna do that same thing we did in the other container, same nice. setup. This one's cool. Is that bok choy, pepper, pansy, coral mum, and the tall dark pepper. Yeah. And then we'll keep this blonde ambition grass next to them. Yeah. Well, we'll keep that there since we don't really know what to do with it. <laughs> All right, plant away. So welcome to the next day. As Eric and I were finishing up with the containers and the cleanup, it started to rain pretty hard. So we weren't able to give you an immediate look at the containers. And we also weren't able to get to our second project, which was cleaning out these friends. So I'm gonna go ahead, set the camera up and walk you through some of the things that were successful and some of the stuff that we might not try again. Well, I wasn't gonna do this today, but I was watching Bethany, the Chicago gardener, cleaning out some of her containers and realized that we have a lot of stuff coming up in the next few weeks. And even though these geraniums and a few of the vegetables might give us some production in the next few weeks, it's better to get them out when we have some time. So since these were not planted too long ago, these geraniums can go right in the bin. These were a late season addition to the garden um, right before our garden show, and they were a success. Um, it was nice to have a little color in here. So I think we might repeat adding in some annuals to, after things like the broccoli and cabbage are finished. So right here, trailing up on top is a morning glory that I started from seed. Problem with this particular morning glory is it wasn't very glorious. It didn't actually bloom. And so it's going, we don't need this. See how helpful that little toolbox is? Okay, so I have to be honest with you. The Morning Glory looked nice. It grew up through there very well on the arch, but that was so difficult to remove and it took forever. I don't know if we're gonna be doing another Morning Glory on here. Um, here is another not so great um, plant. This was a Jackby little pumpkin and it stayed little and it didn't give us a pumpkin. I don't know if a pumpkin from seed is something we're going to be trying again. Lastly in this bed is a Bianco di Sicilia Old World Italian Zucchini. Looks small from your angle, right? Well, here's the thing. A few months ago, it decided to go overboard. And it's been trailing on the ground <laughs> for quite a while. We got a couple zucchini off it. They were good. I don't know if it was my favorite zucchini I'd ever had, but that's a potential for the future to go overboard and do more trailing spilling plants. Okay, one bed down. Let's see what we have in the next one. Here's something fun that we learned this year. We learned that our original spacing of our elevated beds looks great, but it's not as functional. So at the end of the season or in the springtime, we're actually going to stretch this out a little bit. So it's the same formation 
maybe a change, probably the same, but give ourselves a little bit more room in between. Here's another geranium. I did a couple nasturtium from seed. This is a vanilla berry, I believe, which did well. Um, it got huge and I cut it back really hard and then it just uh, reflushed and kept blooming. So I would say that would be something successful. Here's a yellow bell pepper. It produced this very small green pepper. Don't think that was a big hit for us. Um, this is aroma tomato. We did not, and I would say a we, probably more me, didn't really manage the vegetables as well as we could have. This was started as seed. It grew beautifully. Actually, hold up. This was in a Proven Winners Eco Pot. Look at that. It broke right through, sent out tons and tons of roots around it. I'm impressed. I think that's a great idea, not just to keep feeding the plant, but also just to not have to worry about popping your new seedling out of its growing cell when it's still a baby, because sometimes you snap the top off or whatever, but definitely uh, a success with those eco pots, some of that root out. This is a Pizza My Heart pepper, which actually has a couple on here that are looking good. So I'm gonna clean off the bad ones. And that's actually going inside. This one's really good. Leave the rest. The rosemary, absolutely wonderful. This is French rosemary that I grew from seed this year. Very impressed with myself. I've heard rosemary is not the easiest to grow. I checked all these other aromas. They are, uh, not so good. Did you guess it was going to be a secret container? We're not going to let Eric know about it only because, you know, he's the king of containers, but he doesn't like Halloween decor that much. And I thought with this one little secret container, I could do a little spooky season and my own container. So what I've got here is a Primo Black Pearl Hookera. That does that says spooky season. We're gonna put that in there. I've got this super creepy, really fun creeping wire vine. That says spooky season, right? That's pretty cool. And then I have Haley Orange Garden Mum. Put that over here. That's gonna be really spooky. And then I think this one. This is Beverly Orange, a little bit brighter of a mom. So this is a tiny container. I can only fit a little bit in. But then I had this whole idea to do some foraging in our own property. We trimmed this large branch off the bottom of our Diana contorted larch. It's got these funny little pom-poms that didn't fall off yet. It's got some pine cones on it, but it's so twisted and so cool how could we not incorporate this into at least one container, especially if it's our spooky container? Ooh, this one's gonna hang off the edge. All right, so we know that we don't really need to do too much preparation for these containers in the fall, because nothing's really gonna grow. It's gonna grow, it's just not gonna grow a lot. And then get these planted up. Oh, those are good roots. I brought soil out in this specialty soil carrier, otherwise known as save your large containers because they're great for this. I'm gonna stick that wire vine up front. I'm gonna press my two mums in, get them tucked in. And I've got my black pearl. This is gonna go right by our front door behind me where the uh, purple fountain grass is. We'll go right behind the purple fountain grass. And I've got those corn stalks I was just carrying that I'm going to tie up. 
around the lamp posts. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. This is going to be so fun. Kind of wish I had one more plant to go in the back, but you know what? This is going to be fine for my little spooky season container. Ah, uh, let's just do one big one right here. All right. Let's clean this up. Don't even think I'm going to have to water this in. It has been very rainy, which is why I'm on my own today. Okay. I'm going to come around and take a look. Oh, yeah. It looks creepy. It looks spooky. It's going to be perfect. Well, like Christopher said, it is a brand new day. We got rained out the other day, so we're back this morning. And I just wanted to show you kind of the update refresh we did for the patio containers. Right here, we have our trio with our peach tree. We cleaned out underneath it um, so that as it goes dormant this fall, we're going to tuck it up underneath our covered portion of our terrace to protect it. But the peaches are getting pretty big. We're going to have to research to know when we can pick them. That's a good question. I know. Um, if anybody knows, let us know in the comments. We have our mums that I just popped right in. They're starting to open. They've got a nice color on them. This right here is a little sapling, not sapling, treeling, treeling. Yes. Of a beach that I bought on Etsy. It's doing really well this season. I'm going to leave it in the pot a little bit longer until it gets big enough. Our purple fountain grass underplanted with some purple and red mums as they're starting to open. I don't know if I really notice that much of a color difference, but same. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> There's some pansies in there. And behind here, this was getting smothered by our other pot. It's making a nice recovery. This is the double apple blossom begonia, new for 2024. Proven winners. And you can see there's a little face under there. But over here, which I think is a super cute update because it's so simple, it was just put some greens and terracotta. That's my favorite. Yeah, it's just cute and simple. And then moving this way, remember this used to be like a giant mound of begonia and mess, um, coleus, uh, yeah. all in these three little containers. So we took that blonde ambition blue. Is it grandma or gamma? Grandma? Grandma grass. And put it in here for now to hold it over. We have our ornamental peppers and pansies. This is a coral variety of mums. It's Some... a really cool color. I haven't seen it around here before. Yeah, I like that. I was shopping with my friend Carly and she found that color. And I was like, oh, I got to go back for more of those. Bok choy, ornamental peppers. This is a millet. And then this group over here, oh, you'll have to forgive the plate. I had a snack out here earlier. In his hammock. <laughs> In my hammock. Because <laughs> where else would you snack? Our Asian council tree, we've taken out the annuals underneath that. This is going to go uh, to work with Christopher to be in the windows there. For... It's going to be fun putting that in the car. Yeah, so we didn't top it off yet. We wanted to wait to top it off until it was moved into its next location. And then we'll top it off. Um, more mums. This is another combo of purple and red pansies. Purple fountain grass. I might switch this container with that one just so this purple fountain grass gets a little more light. So it catches up. Sideways. Yeah, our Meyer lemon tree. Is look, look, on, look. Yeah, starting to bloom. Well, budding up and there's They're one coming. that's hopefully going to bloom. <laughs> right here is our blue Moffat juniper or Moffat blue juniper. We took out the annuals from underneath it. We're going to leave this in the container uh, at least for this winter, because I think it'd be really cute to have Christmas lights on it or holiday lights on it. I love the idea of a giant evergreen in a container. I think Christopher's a little wary of letting it go too long, but... It's mostly because of knowing how hard it is to replant them once they get really big. Yeah, but I think we're past that point. Yeah, we're past that point. Because it was hard to get it into this container, so... It's going to be a beast. 
yeah. But I want to leave it as long as we possibly can, just because I love the color and structure, and I love that it's on the corner of our terrace. So on our way down to the elevated bed garden, um, you're going to notice to my right that there's a number of incredible white hydrangeas. These are going into our hydrangea room. That install is happening within the next couple of weeks, so we're really excited to get that going and share that with you. Our elevated bed here is all cleaned out. I think Christopher shared that with you in an earlier moment in the video. We've got Before our seascape. I ruined the camera. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our seascape strawberries. We're trying to root some runners down here. Uh, we just filled a container with some potting soil, dropped the runner inside. And so hopefully we'll get some new seascapes. And I'm thinking next year when we do the elevated beds, we'll probably take off this space saver and maybe do all seascapes in here. Maybe connect the two by eight arch to the two by two. Ooh. I don't know. And we're going to rearrange these a tiny bit, not dramatically, but we're going to spread them out a touch. And it's going to be quite a project because they're kind of heavy once they're full. Um, but anyway, we'll get to that. I was wondering if we put the two by fours and the two by twos on the outside with the arches, like kind of switched them. Oh. I thought that'd be pretty. And then you could walk under the arch. These are still our annuals holding strong. Oops. Seascape down holding strong. This begonia is clearly seeing the end of the season for it. I would say one thing I learned about begonias is they are gorgeous and I love them, but they're a little bit messy. Yeah, just a little too much mess. Yeah, so I have to take that into consideration when we plant on the terrace next year. For out here, I think they're fine. Yeah. And but I think up on the terrace, they're a little messy for my taste. I'm pretty sure we've talked about this 20 times this season, but the Selenia apricot begonia color is incredible. Yeah. Uh, the peppers are literally dying on the plant because we just can't keep up with them. <laughs> There's a lot of peppers. <laughs> There's a lot of peppers. The basil has gone to seed. Uh, we do have beans that we've been snacking on whenever we come out here. So the beans are doing well. You'll notice the fennel is starting to fall over. So it's time to get rid of that fennel. We've cut down a lot of the corn stalks. Um, Christopher did a little decor up front with them. I think he showed you earlier. Behind that is a mini hedge of Invincible Lace, which we're going to add another one to shortly. Um, but that's it. I mean, this is just the beginning of fall cleanup. Hey, Eric, do you want to run up front really quick and see a surprise? Sure. All right, here we are at the front and Eric is seeing this little container I put together for the first time. I really like it. I, I actually do really like it. I think it's very sweet. I love the contorted large branch in it. Not a cool. great idea. Just a couple corn stalks on here. I didn't go overboard on you. No, I love it. I mean, the corn stalks on the lamppost is not my style, but that's okay. But I feel like this contorted larch is so much fun. It really is. I like it a lot. All right, Eric, there's a little bit of color on the big containers. Let's go take a peek quick. Oh yeah, we redid these probably two weeks ago. You took out the blue point junipers. Yeah, the color's starting to show up on the mums, which they is come. great. Yeah, I'm happy with how those are coming together. Awesome. Oh, the other update we should give them while we're out here is, look at our Invincible Spirit 2 head, just getting its second flush of blooms. Since it's been planted, they're doing very well. They're nice and happy. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so good. Yeah, it I already really... is. Yeah, I'm happy about that. And the Blue Point Junipers are doing well in their transplanted spot. Well, that was a few days of fall fun. That was a lot of fun. Thanks for coming along as we planted up some fall containers and did a little bit of cleaning in our raised beds. Again, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5B. Thanks for growing with us.